Hello everybody and welcome back to another brainstorm. Today we're going to be talking about plant and animal cells. We're going to split this video up into three parts. First of all we're going to talk about what exactly are cells, then we're going to talk about what's inside the animal cells and finish up by talking about what's inside the plant cells. So let's get into that. Okay guys, so the first thing that we're going to discuss is what exactly are cells. So the first thing that we need to know is that all living organisms are made out of cells. What this means is that every living thing is made up of these tiny little building blocks which are called cells. And most cells can only be seen with a microscope. So you and I, we're both made out of billions of tiny little cells that we can't see with our eye. So scientists will use specialist equipment like a microscope to look at these cells and study them further. The two types of cells that we're going to be looking at in this video are plant and animal cells. These two pictures that you can see here, on the right we have an example of an animal cell, and these are actually cells from the inside of a cheek. And on the left we can see an example of a plant cell, and these are cells which would typically be found inside of a leaf. So we're going to start off with the animal cells and start thinking about what's exactly inside of these cells. So the first thing that we need to note is that inside cells there are lots of different specialised structures that all carry out a specific function. What this means is that the cell is made up of different components that each have unique characteristics that allow them to carry out their job. Animal cells have the following four components that we're going to be discussing in this video. They have a cell membrane, nucleus, cytoplasm and mitochondria, but we'll be discussing these in more detail. Also know that this is the typical cell diagram that you're going to see for an animal cell. Okay, so the first component of the cell that we're going to talk about is the cell membrane. And on the diagram, it's this barrier that we can see around the cell that you can see me highlighting on the diagram. And the function of the cell membrane is to control which substances come into the cell and which substances leave the cell. If we imagine the cell in the diagram to be a cell in our body, the substances that would be entering the cell would be the nutrients and the food that we eat, and we also have waste products leaving the cell. But it's this cell membrane that controls what's going to come in and what's going to come out. We can also think of the cell membrane as being a bit like a security guard, choosing who enters the cell and who leaves the cell. And the second component of the cell that we're going to discuss is the cytoplasm. On the diagram, it's this jelly-like substance that fills up the cell. And this is where all of the cell's chemical reactions take place. It's important to note that this is where all of the other components of the cell are suspended. For example, they're just floating around in here. Okay, so the next part of the cell is the mitochondria or mitochondrion, if we're just talking about the one. And on the diagram, this is these little purple-pink circles that you can see me circling on the diagram now. And the function of the mitochondria is that this is where respiration occurs. Respiration is the process through which the cell produces its energy. In turn, it's through this process that the cell produces energy for the whole organism. We can think of these little mitochondria as being the powerhouse of the cell because they generate the whole organism's energy. Okay, so the final but probably the most important part of the cell is the nucleus, which is this dark turquoise part of the cell that we can see here. Now the function of the nucleus is to control everything that happens in the cell. It gives instructions for other parts of the cells to do what they need to do. It also contains the genetic material for the cell, which is important to allow the cell to make new cells. We can think of this nucleus as being like the boss of the factory, giving instructions to other parts of the cell, or we can also think of it being like the brain because it contains all of that genetic information for the cell. Alright guys, so let's just recap what we've learnt about the animal cell and what's inside it. So the first thing that we need to know is that the animal cell has specialised components that allow it to complete specific functions. And we know that the animal cell has these four components. The nucleus, cell membrane, cytoplasm and mitochondria. So the nucleus is this dark turquoise body inside the cell and its function is that it contains all of the genetic information for the cell which allows the cell to make new cells and it also controls all of the other functions of the cell. Then we have this cell membrane which is the dark blue barrier that we can see all around the cell and this controls which substances enter and which substances leave the cell. 
Then we have the cytoplasm, which is the jelly-like substance which fills the cell. And this is where all of the cell's chemical reactions take place. And finally, we have these mitochondria in the cell. And this is where the cell produces all of its energy. These are the little powerhouses of the cell. And it produces energy through a process known as respiration. Alright guys, so we've discussed what's exactly inside the animal cell, now let's talk about what's inside the plant cell. The first thing that we need to know is that plant cells generally have a more regular structure than the animal cells and have these sort of rectangular appearances. This allows them to be put together a little bit like a brick wall, giving the plant lots of structure. We also need to know that the plant cell has the same components as the animal cell, the four that we talked about were the nucleus, cell membrane, cytoplasm, and the mitochondria. But we also need to know about these three extra components that the plant cell has, which are the cell wall, vacuole, and chloroplasts. But we're gonna go into those in a little bit more detail. Also know that this is the general plant cell diagram that you're gonna come across. All right guys, so the first component of the plant cell that we're gonna talk about is the cell wall. On the diagram we can see it as being this outer yellow wall that goes around the cell. And the function of the cell wall is to strengthen and support the cell. The way it does this is that the cell wall is made out of a really tough fiber which is known as cellulose. And what this does is essentially keeps the plant and the plant cells nice and rigid. You can think of the cell wall as being a bit like a brick wall because of its strength. Alright guys, so the next part of the cell that we're going to discuss is the vacuole, and it's this sac that we can see inside the cell here. And what the vacuole does is that it contains this watery liquid which is known as cell sap, and that just keeps the cell firm. We can think of this as being a bit like a water balloon inside the plant cell. Okay, so the final part of the plant cell is the chloroplasts. The chloroplasts are these little green components that you can see me circling now. And what these chloroplasts do is that this is where all of the plant's photosynthesis happen. Remember that photosynthesis is the reaction which the plant uses the sun's energy to produce its food. The way they do this is these little chloroplasts contain this substance which is green and it's called chlorophyll. What chlorophyll does is it traps energy coming in from the sun which means that these chloroplasts act a little bit like little solar panels in the plant cell, absorbing the sun's energy. Alright guys, so we're going to wrap up this video by quickly recapping what we found inside the plant cell. So note that the plant has three extra features, which are the cell wall, vacuole and chloroplasts. First of all, the cell wall is this outer wall of the cell that we can see here. And this cell wall is made out of a strong fiber known as cellulose. This offers the plant strength and support, and because it's made of this tough cellulose, it keeps the plant cells rigid. Then we have the vacuole, which is this large sac within the cell that we can see here. It contains a watery liquid known as cell sap, and this essentially just keeps the plant cell firm. Finally, we have these little green components here, which are the chloroplasts. They contain a green substance known as chlorophyll, which absorbs energy from the sun and allows the plant to carry out photosynthesis. Also note that alongside these extra features in the plant cell, we can also see the same features which we find in the animal cell. You can see here we've got the nucleus, mitochondria, the cell membrane, and the cytoplasm. And with that, I'd just like to say thank you guys all for watching. Uh, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this and I'll see you guys soon